To create a new company on the EVE portal, you will need to head over to the portal homepage and click on the Add Company tab. This will take you to your account screen which lists all of your existing accounts. If you're looking for an existing company, search for them in the search box on the right hand side. If it's a brand new customer, click on the Add New Account button to the left and enter the details of your new customer. This will create the customer both within the EVE portal and the back-end billing system. Now it's time to fill in the customer details including account number, name and address. For the domain, you should use the customer's email or web domain. If they don't have one or use a generic version, make one up which resembles the company name. If the customer has requested the collaboration functionality, tick the toggle at the bottom of the screen and then click Next. This next section is where you order your new numbers. Eve has two different types of numbers, standard numbers and gold numbers. Gold numbers do cost more than standard and all numbers have a setup cost with no monthly rental. Simply enter the area code that you're looking for and it will list all of the available numbers. This is all real time so number availability may change. Once you've selected the number or numbers, click next. The next screen is presentation type. So this is the default for when you create customers on the EVE portal. We're asking, do you want the customer to present all of their individual DDIs? Do you want them to select the main group number, which we call switchboard, or do you want them to present anonymously? Whichever option you do select, you'll need to enter a switchboard number here, then click next. This pop-up just explains how we need to adhere to the Ofcom regulations, so we can only present numbers which we own or are authorised to display. Simply click the box to say that you understand and accept these, then click OK. This next section is to allow access for the end user to access their voicemails from an external source. Users would typically access this from within an EVE environment, but if they wish to dial in from an external source, like a PSTN or a mobile number, we can assign a number to either the voicemail or group voicemail. On dialing, it will ask for their EVE DDI and voicemail password to allow access. We then come to extension dialing, which tells the system whether you'd like a three-digit or four-digit extension dialing. We then add our internal extension ranges. Click on the plus icon in the middle. There is no monthly rental for internal ranges, we just need to let the system know what they will be. In terms of extension ranges, there are some reserved numbers, especially within the 100 range. For example, 111 is showing as reserved. Click on the link to show all existing reserved numbers and the reasons why. Now insert the start of your number range and the end, then click next. This takes you onto conferencing. If you wish to have a conferencing bridge on the EVE platform, simply provide an external dialing number. This will be the number to dial in in order to join, with each conference having its own unique PIN number. We then add the maximum number of participants. Each participant is a monthly chargeable rate and are shared amongst all conferences at any one time. Next is default call configuration. These are the default settings when creating an EVE user including personal queue for users that are high volume. This will queue the call within the cloud and allow the caller to hear music whilst they wait. If this option is not selected and we have a call waiting, a secondary call would come through to the user via beeping in their earpiece and display on their handset. To activate, click the toggle. Next is voicemail. This is a personal voicemail box, so if you wish for all users to have a personal voicemail box, simply click the toggle. Lastly is ring timeout. And this is how long you want the call to ring against the user before going to voicemail or return in the busy tone. The default is currently set at two minutes, but alongside a voicemail, we strongly recommend that you reduce this down. Clicking next takes us to the group bar in section. So this affects all users and enables calls to either be made or calls to be barred. By default, we allow all of those shown on the left and bar all of those listed on the right. You can change these by simply clicking the toggle buttons or by hovering you can see whether they are currently barred or unbarred. This screen is where we create the site. Every company needs to have a main site and a name. The name that you choose is important here as the company organisation filter organises companies in an alphabetical order. So for the site to sit directly below the company, we recommend using the company name followed by the geographic location. The address will be pre-populated, which you can amend if needed, or click next. This takes us to our daily spend limits. This is the exceptional call protection rating. 
This is all real time and comes in two limits. The daily spend warning, which indicates that the customer has hit this limit, and the daily spend cap. Once this spend is reached, it will bar all outbound calls and cut calls off with the exception of emergency services. Ideally, the limits will reflect the likely spend of the customer. Alternatively, you can enter in a value that you feel will accommodate usage. Once completed, click save and you've created your company.